Okay, we're going to try this again. Um, this is chapter 24. We are talking, this chapter is going to be about Earth, <clears throat> the moon, and the sun. So um, we're going to start with Earth. It's where we live. By the time you get done, you should be able to recognize that Earth is a modified sphere. The official name of that is an oblate spheroid. And you should be, be able to describe the evidence for this conclusion. You should be able to explain what causes Earth's magnetism and the effects that magnetism has on Earth. Describe Earth's rotation on its axis and describe Earth's revolution around the sun. Guys, I'm going to tell you those are two words that people get confused all the time. Rotation, revolution. All right? So, we should know by now, hopefully you learned this in 6th, 7th, or 8th grade at least, that Earth is one of the inner planets in our solar system. We are not the one closest to the sun. We are the third planet from it. Skipper. I do. Uh, yeah, does she need a pass? Okay. Um, at, are you in 246? Okay. Oh, bye. Nicole. 246, Miss Brenda. I don't know whether you're supposed to take all your stuff or not, but I don't know. Upstairs. That's all I did. That's all I did. Okay. Um, Earth is an oblate spheroid. That means that instead of being a perfect circle, the poles have kind of been squished in a little bit. So it's if you were gonna, if you were to measure the distance from pole to pole, and the measure, and then measure the distance from east to west across, that there would be a difference. The pole to pole would be shorter than the width. Okay. Two forty one. Two forty six. So it it looks like um, looks like Santa, you know, skinny at the top and bottom and chubby in the middle. Right? Okay. Um, hopefully you know that if I take that sphere and I cut it in half, I have two hemispheres. On our planet, we have the northern hemisphere and we have the southern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere is by the, I know, don't be too shocked here, north pole. And so it's north of the equator. And the southern hemisphere, oh my gosh, is by the south pole, right? Or south of the equator. Anybody totally shocked by anything on that today? Right? I know. Hard stuff today. Boy, I don't like this. I thought I was going to like this one. I don't particularly like this one. Like, I think that's not. I like the background. Maybe if I make the print like black instead of that color. I don't know. Anyway, it looks much prettier on my screen. Sorry. So we know the Earth. Oh, please. We know the Earth is round, okay, or a sphere, right? Everybody accepts that. Okay. Well, crazily enough. No, not everybody accepts that. There are, believe it or not, there are still people out there that think the world is flat. I know. Thank you. Um, I've actually had people try to convince me of that when they found out that I was an earth science teacher. And it's like, oh, you know, whatever. Because they were grown adults and there was no point in trying to argue with, you know, trying to argue with them about it. One of the things that helps us know that Earth is round, okay, a sphere, is, have you, how many of you have ever been to the beach? Okay, or out like 
on a big body of water, maybe not the beach, but out on a big body of water, okay? And you saw a ship or a boat or something sailing away from you, right? And when it gets far enough away, it doesn't just drop off the edge, right? It kind of looks like it's sinking. Right? You lose the bottom of it first, and then you use, lose a little bit more, and then that's because it's going around the curve. <laughs> I know, it's exciting, right? Yeah. So because we lose the bottom of it first as it slowly goes around, that kind of lets you know it's following a curve on around it. An even better thing to show you that, though, is when we have a lunar eclipse, what happens is you have the moon, and then Earth is here, and then the sun is here, right? How many of you have ever played with shadows? Like we, you had a light, and you had a wall, and you put your hand in between to try to make the weird, you know what I'm talking about. I saw that smile, right? You try to make the weird shapes with your hands, right? Okay? If I do this with my hand, in front of a light, what's going to happen? What's this going to look like? Yeah, it's going to look like this, right? If I do this in front of a light, what's going to happen? What's, what's the shadow going to look like? Is it going to look like this? No! So when we have a lunar eclipse and we have the sun here, we have the moon here, and we have Earth here, and the shadow on the moon looks like this. Can our Earth be like this? No. So the shadow that we get on the moon during a lunar eclipse is a great way to prove, hey, look, folks, we got a round thing. Um, not only that, but we also look at other planets and our sun. We know that our planet is the size and the way that it is. You guys, I'm sorry. This is uh, because of gravitational attraction. Gravity pulls stuff in, right? And it doesn't pull stuff into a square. If you drop a drop of water, gravity is part of what pulls that water. Yes, it's surface tension too but gravity pulls that water into a little blob as it falls. It doesn't pull it into a square, right? We also know by now that <laughs> Earth has a magnetic field. This magnetic field, we have, because remember we talked about this earlier, we have this magnetic field because the very center of our planet is a core of solid iron and nickel. Yes? And on the outside of that inner core, there is a liquid iron and nickel that travels and, oh, who remembers what this is? When heat rises and then it cools and it sinks and it rises when it heats up and it, what do we call that? What? Yes! Thank you. It travels in that convection current. Okay? And it is because you have this convection current around the outside of a solid nickel core that we get our magnetic field. Now, a lot of people think that our magnetic field looks like that top one. Okay? It's just that magnetism goes from north to south, and it just does this, and it's all in nice little pretty little arcs. Of course, we can't see any of that, but that's okay. But actually, her magnetic core looks more like this. Because there aren't just a few of these little arcs. There are a gazillion of these little arcs that are protecting our planet. This magnetic field extends for thousands of kilometers into space. Thank goodness. 
and its whole purpose is to protect us and shield us from solar radiation and from some of the smaller stuff that might try to bombard our planet. Smaller asteroids, smaller pieces of space junk. All right? Are you good? Have you got it? Love me forever if you can reach that for me. I think you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Look, you just you didn't even stand on your tiptoes. Now I have to love him forever, don't I? Oh man. Thank you, good sir. I appreciate it. Okay, so I you don't even have to just go okay so we have this imaginary line that starts at the North Pole it goes all the way through our planet to the South Pole is there really a pole that runs through our earth like that no it is an imaginary line that runs straight through our planet we call this our axis all right earth rotates on its axis That means it spins on its axis. That's all rotate means, is to spin. So the fact that Earth is doing this means that it is rotating on the axis, all right? Now, there's another word that sounds a lot like, okay, it doesn't really sound a lot like, but it kind of sort of, people confuse it, all right? Because at the same time that we're doing this, we're not just standing here in the middle of our universe doing this. Right? Anybody surprised by that? No, didn't think so. Because at the same time we're doing this, we are moving around the sun. So, um, Abby's going to be my son. Shine brightly, Abby. You got this, okay? Okay, at the same time I'm spinning like this, we're also orbiting the sun. This is called a revolution. Mrs. Skipper, that's not what a revolution is. A revolution is when the people stand up and they fight for what they believe. Yes, you're right, that is a revolution. But we're talking about it. You're talking about the history kind, I'm talking about the earth science kind, okay? Revolution is a trip around the sun. Rotation is spinning on our axis. I'm going to say that one time, one more time. Revolution is a trip around the sun, or our moon revolves around us. Okay? Rotation is spinning on your axis. How did, we, how did we ever figure out that we were doing this? In 1851, there was this scientist. His name was Leon Foucault. Nope, I pronounced that wrong. Foucault, sorry. Um, and they had pendulums back then. Do you guys know what a pendulum is? It's where you have a great big long string, and on the end of the string you put a ball a weight of some kind. And that pendulum, you start it swinging, and that pendulum swings back and forth. Okay? Now, if you've ever seen a grandfather clock, have you ever seen a grandfather clock? Yeah. You know the thing on the bottom that swings like this on some of them? Uh -huh. 
Those are pendulums. All right, have you ever been to the Children's Museum? Okay, they used to, I don't know, do they still have the pendulum there? Oh, did you ever see the pendulum while it was there? Okay. Big old thing, this ball was like huge, right? And it was hanging on the string from the ceiling and it swung. That's what it did all day. Now the thing about a pendulum is it will always swing. Once you get it started, it is always gonna swing in the same direction. If I start a pendulum this way, it is always gonna swing this way. It is never gonna turn around and swing this way. Unless I stop it and it's starting to get. Okay? But it's weird. Because Foucault set up, set up this pendulum with little pegs all the way around it. And instead of just hitting that pin and that pin, and that's all it did, it knocked down every one of those pins all the way around it. Now, Mrs. Skipper, you just said that a pendulum will never change the direction that it swings. Always going to swing like this. It will. All day. Did, it, did he go swing and make it swing around in a circle? No. He noticed that that, that direction never changes. It appears to, and he got to thinking about it, and he goes, well, how is that happening? If the pendulum isn't changing direction, that means what is underneath the pendulum has to be changing directions, right? <laughs> if I'm swinging like this, that's all I'm doing, but I'm knocking down all the pins over here too. Then that means this has to be moving, not me. Yeah? So he made this fabulous discovery and everybody went, whoa, that's kind of awesome. So it takes the earth. 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds to spin on its axis one full time. But I'm revolving around the sun. And so when I, if I was just staying here, it would take exactly that long for me to come back and face the sun in the exact same way, right? But because I, I start here and I'm moving, it's going to take me a little bit longer to face the sun here than it did here. It's going to take me just a few more minutes to get back around to where I was. To be mostly precise, it takes 3 minutes 56 seconds to find, to get myself recentered on the sun again. Well, if you add 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds, and you add three minutes, 56 seconds to that, you get 24 hours. Which is why our day is 24 hours long. Kind of amazing there. Anybody feel like you're spinning all the time? Probably not, right? Because you're on the earth. But at the equator, to go all the way around our planet in 24 hours, we are traveling approximately 1,056 miles per hour all the time. You feel like you're traveling 1,056 miles per hour right now? But you are. What? I know, weird, right? Because we're on it, so we don't feel it. Now, here's the weird part, by the way. Up here. Now, look, because 24 hours, we have to go this whole big distance if I'm at the, if I'm at the equator, right? 
But if I'm at the pole, and all I have to do is go from here around to here again, I'm not hardly moving at all. Isn't that weird? I know, when I first learned about that, I went, no, I can't fit this. Okay. That's odd. But it's true. We know that it takes Earth 365.24 days to make one complete trip around the sun.
Perihelion is when we are closest. Aphelion is when we are farthest. One revolution around the sun, we go approximately 150 million kilometers or 93 million miles. And if we do that in a year, that means we are at about 97.2, is it? Yeah, kilometers per hour. Y'all, we are trucking. It doesn't feel like we are going that fast, but we are. We move faster when we are at the perihelion, when we're closer, we move faster. When we're at the aphelion or farther away, we move a little bit slower. Um, it's kind of like, okay, y'all ever been roller skating? Okay, did y'all ever play that game when you go roller skating where everybody joins hands and you're whipping each other around? Okay, don't, don't hurt yourself. Not that I would know that from experience. Okay, I would know that from experience. It's bad. The closer you are, the faster you go when you're in that little that little area. It's like, right? And they're going, and then you're pretty, you're going pretty fast on the outside too. But you're going faster when you're closer because you've got more energy pulling you around. <sighs> you guys is killing me. As I said, our orbital path doesn't have anything to do with our seasons. Our seasons are caused because of this. You will notice that every time you see a globe of our planet, it's tilty. It is not like this, right? Have you ever seen an example of our planet where it is straight up and down on its axis like this? No, because we aren't like that. We're tilted. Our axis is tilted just a little bit. 23.5 degrees. If, if we were going, you know, like this, we're at 23.5 degrees. So the reason that we have our seasons is when the northern hemisphere, when the north pole, is pointed you guys have picked up sorry is pointed toward the sun we're having summer in the northern hemisphere but okay you're gonna be the sun okay okay right now northern hemisphere is pointed toward the sun right we're getting most of abby's rays right here <laughs>
Okay, look through your slides so I know what I need to go back and you can get them before you turn them in. What's it say on it? There you go. Because, see, I have to, I, you can't really go by number six because that's why number seven. And it gets worse as, it, as we go. Okay. Where are your notes? Okay. How did you open them? Okay. Then if you hit, sub, if, if you hit submit, it should submit your notes. If you open them there, it should submit them. All right, this would be a great time if you owe me work for you to work on the missing work that you owe me. Um, tomorrow, I will have a printout. <coughs> Sorry. Tomorrow, I will have a printout of all of your missing work so that you will know exactly what you need to do on Friday as a makeup day, yes? Yes. 